diet analysis and diet counseling. As we all know that a successful clinician is one who makes the patient realize that what and teach the patient that what is the root of the problem and how to help in producing the effect or help in preventing the problem from occurring or how what is the solution of the problem. Today we will be discussing about what is diet, what is food, what is balanced diet, the various constituents of a balanced diet and how the diet is ketogenic, what type of diet is more ketogenic, how can we prevent such type of ketogenic diet by the various measures which can be taught by the clinician or the dentist and the diet counseling program. So basically what is individual diet counseling program? The main objectives of the diet counseling program is to plan a proper balanced diet and eliminate any unessential factors or unessential elements from the diet and to balance or equalize the diet of a person. Then second is the habitual dietary modifications which has to be taught by the clinicians to the patient in order to maintain a proper balanced anti-cardiogenic diet. Then what basically is diet is? Diet is basically the food and the beverages which are taken at regular intervals of time and food is anything which is taken or which is drunk which is eaten for the maintenance of the energy levels and building up of the body and other process vital functions of the body and what is nutrition nutrition is basically anything which will help or aid in the proper maintenance of the body the energy levels of the body and building up of the body then what is a balanced diet balanced diet is one which contains it is a type of diet which contains all the type of foods in a balanced state whether it may be proteins vitamins minerals cereals pulses or every constituent of food should be present in a balanced level in order to maintain the healthy functioning vital human body so how does that food affects the human body the food has the general effects on the human body which will help in building process of the body building up of tissues then vital functions of the body are carried out by the means of energy which is provided by the food the nutritional status of the body and the healthiness of all the various organs of the body are maintained by a balanced diet. This is the systemic effect of the food. Even some local effect of the food is observed in teeth and oral cavity. For example, if the diet is more cardiogenic, it will lead to dental caries, rampant caries, nursing bottle caries or early childhood caries in children or adults. So this was the local effect of food. Now we come what are the various classes of nutrients which are present in diet. These may be first is the cereals or the pulses which provide carbohydrates. These the following are the basic five types of foods. These are five foods which help in the building process of the body. They provide 75% of the recommended dietary allowance of the body level. Now so these are carbohydrates which are required for the energy, then proteins for the building process of the body, and fats which are required in minimal quantity, then minerals and vitamins which are also required in micro or minimal quantity for the maintaining of the vital functions of the body and water which is about 75% of the level of the body. These were the five basic food groups. Now these five basic food groups have certain there are foods which provide these food groups for example cereals and pulses provide us with energy and calories carbohydrates and proteins for the building up of the body and maintaining of all the functions of the body like sitting talking walking sleeping studying working out etc then vegetables then which are green leafy vegetables which may provide us with iron and other basic elements then are 
roots and tubers, then milk, milk products, then oils and fat additives are also present. The daily requirement of the toddler, the preschooler, the schooler, the adult, adolescents and the old age can be recorded in this chart. Now, the daily exercise and daily food intake, the basic food group is the pulses or the cereals food group, which should be taken at least four to five times a day. Then comes the food group of vegetables that should be in two to three equally divided servings. Then comes the fruit group, which should be around one to two to three requirement of the basic servings. Then the fish and the poultry should be just 0 to 2 times. Milk or the other protein and other calcium supplement should be once to twice in the daytime. And the various fats like butter, oil, ghee should be used in minimal quantity. Now, what are the objectives of the diet counseling program? The main objective are to recover or to recuperate any dietary imbalances and to change the dietary habits in a proper or in a beneficial way. The, there is a proposed diet counseling program which involves that the first step of the diet counseling program is interviewing the patient, the name of the patient, the age, the other daily habits of the patient, the hobbies and other preferences, likes or dislikes. Even the socio-economic level and the occupation needs to be recorded. So this is what comes under the basic interview. Then comes the food habits of the person. A 24-hour diet diary has to be maintained by the patient to the person who is coming for the diet counselling. After the 24-hour diary, a 6-day diary needs to be maintained and the complete record of what food is eaten, what is not eaten, and how much is eaten should be recorded in the diary. Then after we progress with the interview and the maintenance of the diet diary, then comes analysis of the diet diary. From the diet diary, we note that how many sugar, how many times the sugar is taken, how much sugar is taken, how much it is consumed, whether it is consumed with meals, or in between meals or any snacks are taken, any additives are taken along with this diet or sugar in the diet. Then we also note any cream or butter which is taken along or any sugar substitute which are taken along with the sugars. So this was the isolating of the sugar factors. Now after isolating the sugar factors, we educate the patient what is the importance of sugar and what is the importance of taking less sugar in diet so it may lead to less ketogenicity of the diet. Now comes the most important step is where the diet counseling should take place. The diet counseling should take place in an isolated chamber or isolated area where the hindrances from the dental operatory like sound of a scaler and the sound of the compressor is not there. Even the crying of other children should not reach the chamber. So the chamber should be in silence and properly operated. It should be operated by a dietitian or a dentist or a diet counsellor. Even a dental hygienist can operate the diet counselling procedure. Now, who should receive the counselling is the people who should receive the counselling if the child is less than 6 years of age, the mother and the father receive the counselling. If he is more than 6 years of age, along with the child in the operatory, the mother and the father can receive the counselling. And after, if the child is at the school level or adolescent level, then alone the child can receive the diet counselling. So at elementary school level, the parent should accompany the child in the diet counselling session. And if the child is adult enough to understand, then alone the child can be administered any form of diet counseling from the dietitian or from the dentist. Then, what is the first appointment? The first appointment needs interviewing the child or interviewing the parents. Then, in the first appointment, we educate the child what is the importance of diet and nutrition and proper healthy being. 
we also try to figure out that what if the diet is ketogenic or it is not ketogenic but we should not emphasize on the fact that, that sugar leads to the ketogenicity of the diet but we should be not judgmental at that level so that the child projects its normal self in front of the dentist and then 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 the diet diary is maintained so that each and every diet record is maintained like how many cups of milk if the child is taking then how many spoonfuls of sugar the child is taking if it is half teaspoon or one teaspoon or one tablespoon and then we should also note down that whether the child is taking the food in between the meals snack in between the meals or so on so every minor details in the diet diary should be recorded now the patient should ask to record every minor detail then the diet diary after six days is evaluated and the patient is asked to isolate all the sugar factors by the means of red crosses that is if the patient is taking how many times and how much amount of sugar the patient should be recorded by the means of a red cross and the patient should ask to decrease this red crosses in number of weeks so lesser ketogenicity of diet will be there one should also educate the patient the role of sugar in modifying the decaying process for example if more sugar is there then more acids will be produced by the bacteria and more plaque and more demineralization of the tooth surface will be there so which we should also suggest the children or the mother or the caretakers about the role of the sugar substitute that in order to substitute the sugar from the diet certain other foods should be used like artificial sweeteners then nuts are there and other type of foods like carrots then fresh fruits fresh vegetables and uh, peanut butter then nuts popcorn corn chips can be used as a substitute to more ketogenic type of diet then we will also note that how the quantity or uh, how the food is prepared whether it is more sticky in nature or it is it can be easily removed from the oral cavity or washed away by the saliva so in the diet diary the number of times the food or number of times the sugar is taken the amount of sugar is taken then how it is prepared is also recorded and finally the patient is asked to reduce the exposure of the sugar levels then another comes and how to calculate the total time of the sugar which is consumed we should always multiply the total number of sugar exposure to 20 into 20 so finally we come to the conclusion that how much time the sugar is exposed in the oral cavity then comes the recall visit the children and the parents should be recalled on a regular basis and the diet can be evaluated by the means of the clinical examination the suggestions which are made from the parents and the patients then oral examination then senders test and other caries activity test can be made even diet diary is a very good means of evaluating the type of the diet the patient is taking and the ketogenicity of the diet. Thank you.